Hi, this is Tarek Sami and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 179 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of a protected left main CTO PCI. The patient had previous coronary bypass graft surgery with a lima to LAD that he had occluded and an open vein graft to the LAD as well as a vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch. He had a non-STEMI, he presented with exertional angina, low ejection fraction and multiple comorbidities. This is his diagnostic angiogram. He has a left main CTO with a blunt proximal cap. The right coronary artery is patent without any significant stenosis. And these are the two patent saphenous vein grafts. One is going to the mid LAD with good flow and the other one is going to an obtuse marginal branch. And both grafts are actually okay. However, the vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch supplies retrogradely a fairly large ramus branch that was considered to be the culprit vessel for the patient's symptoms. We can better see this here. This is the proximal segment of a large ramus branch. There is a previous stent in this location and that has significant instant restenosis. Actually, prior to coming to us, the patient had an unsuccessful attempt for going retrograde and placing a stent into this area of instant restenosis. The patient was referred to us for canalizing the left main CTO into the ramus branch and uh, this way um, dissociating uh, the perfusion of the ramus from the flow through the saphenous vein graft. The characteristics of the CTO, we have a blunt cup, the occlusion length is relatively short, about 20 millimeters. There is a almost trifurcation of the distal cap with the ramus as well as the first obtuse marginal branch and the distal circumflex. And we do have a good retrograde option with the saphenous vein graft that goes to the obtuse marginal branch. Therefore, our plan was to go retrograde through the saphenous vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch. If that did not work, then to go undergrade. To achieve better support, we used a large 8 friends AL1 guide catheter, which is our guide of choice for left-sided bypass grafts. This is a guide extension, a trap liner, as well as a Caravel microcatheter. This was a Sion Blue workhorse wire. We had difficulty wiring into the Ramos branch, but once the Caravel was delivered proximal to the SVG touchdown, then we were able to advance the Sion Blue all the way into this large Ramos branch. The distal cap was actually bland as well. So we decided at this point to use undergrade wiring using the retrograde equipment as the target for undergrade crossing attempts. This is a Corsair microcatheter along with a Gaia Next 3 and that made some progress, but we could not quite make it all the way to the distal true lumen. We tried with a Gladius Mongo polymer jacketed guide wire, but we were still unable to cross. And then we went back into the Gaia Next 3 and uh, we did multiple attempts. Uh, the wire seemed to enter into the extra plug space. The tip was not free, but it was moving in sync with the retrograde gear. But eventually um, the wire actually advanced and entered into the distal circumflex branch. So now that we have a wire into a branch, the next step usually is to advance a dual lumen microcatheter and then use another wire to go into the main branch, which is the ramus in our case. But unfortunately, the problem we had is we could not advance the Corsair over the Gaia next wire. So this is an example of a microcatheter and crossable lesion. We have a fairly resistant proximal cap that uh, creates a significant difficulty for the undergrade equipment to cross through. How to solve this problem? Usually we start with a small balloon, get more support, for example, with a guide extension. We can use different microcatheters, laser, sometimes atherectomy, sometimes subindimal techniques. Uh, in this particular case, we used a Subfire 1.0 millimeter balloon and this successfully dilated the lesion. We then delivered a Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter. And this is a two operator technique in which one operator is moving the dual lumen microcatheter back and forth. And the other one is advancing a guide wire through the over the wire lumen back and forth until the guide wire finds its way into the target vessel, which is the ramus in our particular scenario.
This two operator technique can truly be very useful. Now we were able to predilate with a 3.0 millimeter balloon. We do have a, a guide wires both in the ramus and we have also a guide wire into the circumflex. We're protecting all three branches of the trifurcation. And we were then able to deliver a drag eluting stand. We decided to, to stand using the provisional strategy because there was no significant lesion in the ostia of the obtuse marginal as well as the circumflex. And moreover, we did have a patent SVG supplying the obtuse marginal branch. So we placed a 3.0 by 32 millimeter drag eluting stand all the way from the left main that had obviously disease, it was occluded distally all the way to the proximal portion of the rims. We did intravascular ultrasound to check the result, critically important in these uncrossable lesions, which are often also undilatable. And we do see that the stand distally looks okay, but there is some underexpansion more proximally, especially here at the origin of the ramus. And then there is some disease also into the left main. So we ended up uh, doing repeat post dilations with a high pressure balloon. And then we also did the proximal optimization technique with a 3.5 and 4.0 millimeter NC balloon in the left main. After doing that, we repeated intravascular ultrasound with chroma flow. And once again, there is good stent expansion. There is a large area into the ramus. And as we come back into the left main, the areas actually are also fairly large and we do have uh, the stand covering essentially all the way to the ostium of the left main. So nice result with coverage of the lesion, good expansion and coverage all the way to the left main ostium. And this is the final angiographic result. We do have excellent flow into the ramus, but we also have preserved flow into the circumflex and also in the obtuse marginal branch that obviously has competitive flow from the vein graft. Several lessons from this case. The first one is um, the importance of uh, changing guide wires when uh, trying to puncture during undergrade wiring. In this case, we had a fairly hard proximal cap that uh, required a guy on X3 for successful puncture. Second lesson is that actually the wire went into the circumflex, so we had to use a dual lumen microcatheter to direct another wire into the ramus. Third lesson. The lesson is the importance of uh, modifying the lesion when we cannot advance equipment through a tight and crossable lesion. In this case, a small balloon, a Sapphire 1.0, was all it took uh, for the lesion to yield and equipment to be delivered. And then finally, we did use intravascular ultrasound. This is a heavily calcified vessel and lesion. And IVUS was important to ensure that we have a nice result with good stent expansion, stent strata position and coverage of the entire lesion. Finally, we did stand provisional approach and we did not have any compromise in the flow of the obtuse marginal or the distal circumflex. Thank you.